During the summer of 2021, Mego, or Mego, partnered with Tops to produce a line of exclusive Mego figures. And these figures would be from a whole host of diverse brands, including Star Trek, Planet of the Apes, and Hammer Horror. Each week, a handful of these figures would be announced and released on the website to purchase, and collectors would have just one week to make their purchases. Whilst the scheme was initially rolled out in the US, it did eventually get rolled out to the UK as well, albeit very late in the day, and the scheme was ended pretty abruptly not long after. But there were two releases that we were able to get our hands on, and they were the Hammer Plague of the Zombies zombie and the Phantom of the Opera. These figures ended up taking quite a long time to be produced, but they have arrived at last, and today I'll be taking a closer look at both of them. So, starting with the packaging, it is the standard Mego clamshell packaging that we all know and love. We can see on the design side of things, we have the logo of the film's title there, The Plague of the Zombies. We have the Hammer logo above that, which is a nice and clear. And we have an image from the film there, which is a pretty striking of the zombie, which is a pretty cool. And I like some of the uh, bloodstained effects that are peppering the artwork there as well, which is great. And of course, we can see the zombie up front and center in the packaging there and he looks really colourful and bright which is fantastic. Flipping the packaging over we have more images from the film, some artwork here that will be very familiar to anyone who owns the Blu-ray. I really like this approach of lifting artwork from the posters of these films, I think it's a really striking visual and looks pretty fun if you want to put it on display. And straight off the bat, I have to say, I think they've done a really nice job of capturing the look and likeness of probably the most famous zombie from this film. And there's a pretty nice texturing to this outfit as well that sets it apart from other figures in the series. And I have to say, the most impressive part of this figure is the head sculpt. I think this is a really fantastic sculpt and it's wonderfully painted. There's a lot going on here, which is unusual for a Mego figure. And I think they've done a pretty nice job of capturing the likeness of the actor in the role, which is uh, pretty cool. And as I said, those paint apps there are really well applied and there's a lot of texture and detailing here. The outfit itself is pretty straightforward, a simple design, and they've done a really nice job of capturing that, and I particularly like the material they've used, which is a sort of coarse, rough kind of cotton material, but it feels very scratchy, it feels very appropriate, and it has a nice texture to it, which again, helps it stand out from the other figures in this line. I think it's a very nice touch, and it looks the part. The skirt is a separate piece, but it's made of the same material, so it's pretty consistent and looks really good. Now, as ever, I thought I'd run through the articulation. He does have a swivel at the head, so he can spin right the way around, 360 degrees if you want him to. He does have the ball joint, which is held together with elastic bands in the shoulder there, so the arm can kind of pop out, and you can kind of lift it up and to the side. He does have a single joint, a hinge at the elbow, and then there is a pin swivel at the wrist, so that lower wrist can rotate 360 degrees, and of course, it hinges forwards and backwards as well. So, there is enhanced articulation coming with some of these Figures, particularly the Star Trek ones, but they aren't present here with these hammer figures at the moment. He does have a ball joint at the waist, so he can move from side to side, he can move forwards and backwards as well, which is great, and he can lean from left to right as well, which is great. He's also got the ball joint in the hips, so his legs can kick out to the side, they can kick forwards and backwards, again, they are held together with elastic pans, and there is, of course, the single joint at the knee, allowing it to bend to roughly 90 degrees, with a hinge at the ankle. There's no accessories to come with this particular character, but that's okay. I wouldn't really expect there to be any, to be fair. I think they've done a really nice job with this figure. It's a very simple idea, very simple design, but it is really well executed, and that is the name of the game. And I have to say, I do think there is a, a notable upswing in terms of the quality and the paint apps that were seen in the head sculpt, and in particular, the actual texturing of the outfit itself is very, very nicely produced. Next up, we have the Phantom of the Opera. Again, we see the logo of the film title at the top of the box there. Then we have some artwork that's been lifted from the posters of this film, which is very attractive. It's very nicely done. It's quite atmospheric and very moody, and I think they've done a really nice job of this. But that's nothing compared to the image they've used on the back of the box, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. I love this image. I think it's really colourful. It's very bright, really beautifully illustrated, and it's fantastic to have this writ large on the back of this packaging. It makes it really displayable and very presentable. I think they've done a really great job of this. 
Now, by contrast, there is a bit more complexity to the tailoring and the outfit of this character, but it's very nicely produced once again. I think they've done a really good job of the tailoring here. It looks nicely proportioned with enough detail to keep it interesting. Once again, I think they've done a very nice job of the head sculpt and the paint apps they've used are really nicely applied. There's actually a number of different paints going on here, which is nice to see that washed over the figure to create a good amount of texturing on the face, which I think is really nice. Now, if I was being critical, I would say that perhaps it isn't the greatest likeness in the world, just simply due to some of the paint apps, the colours they've used for the hair and uh, on, the, on the facial hair as well. Uh, maybe should have been a bit lighter, a bit more of a closer to a blonde rather than a grey, but that's a very minor gripe. Overall, I think they've done a really nice job. And of course, a pretty faithful likeness. As I mentioned, the tailoring is a little bit more complex. It does have this outer coat, which again, is quite nicely done. Uh, it's nice to have the little buttons sewn in there. It's quite a nice effect. And then he does have this waistcoat underneath. Again, some buttons on there. And underneath this, he does have another white shirt, which is great with a tie as well, which you can just about untuck and tuck back in. So there's actually a number of layers here, which make this quite fun and interesting. It makes it feel a bit more textured than perhaps we're used to seeing, which is a really nice touch. The shoes and trousers, on the other hand, are pretty standard. There's nothing really new here. The shoes, of course, are made of that rubber that we've seen on many other Mego figures in the past. And, of course, there are no socks, sadly, which would have been a nice addition, but sadly isn't here. On the other hand, he does come with an accessory, which is pretty fun, and that, of course, is his mask. Now, it is just a single piece. It sadly doesn't really comfortably fit over his face. It would have been nice if this could have been an alternate look uh, to, to be able to strap this on, but mm, sadly, it doesn't quite work. You can persevere and hold it in place, but obviously, it doesn't really marry up with his eye line. It looks a little bit too bland, a little bit too basic, and it doesn't really quite work in this way. So it is really just a prop to be held in his hand. And I have to say, this look isn't too bad, actually. This works quite nicely. So all things considered, I think this is a pretty solid release. I do really like the tailoring on the outfit, and I do think the head sculpt, despite maybe not being the most accurate in terms of colouring, I think they've done a really good job with the scars on the face and the placements, and it makes a really welcome addition to this ever-growing line. And after all is said and done, that is what it's all about, having a really fun collection of Mego action figures. And I think they've done a pretty nice job with these two figures. There's no real surprises here. I do think there is a, a slight uptick in quality when it comes to the head sculpts and the paint apps that they've used, but I don't think there's anything too surprising here. But they're solid releases, and I think if you're a Hammer fan or just a Mego fan, then you're probably going to want to pick these up and get these in your collection. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.